we uh, just discussed how we would uh, create new asynchronous functions, how we would run things in parallel, how we would run them in task groups. Now we want to look into how we would deal with old APIs uh, like uh, those using callbacks and delegates. How can we bridge them to be used uh, via async, uh, async await interface? Let's see what I mean. Here we have like, uh, let's imagine it's an old API. Uh, let's actually switch the screen so we can work work on the second uh, project. So uh, like a slot, it's called. So here is how this old API would look like. It's just a function uh, with a completion handler. How we would convert it to async await, right? Let's uh, let's start um, let's start with creating a new class that would look exactly like this one, and we'll call it uh, lucky slot async. So we just take the actual implementation and um, here's how we do that. So the task is actually to convert this completion handler into a sync function. And how we do it is with using this, uh, with check throw and continuation thing, right? Uh, just remember this long cre uh, creepy name. I hope they rename it soon, but uh, for now it's, uh, it's called like that. So we get a closure with continuation and inside of this closure, we can actually call our old API that also uses the closure and pass the result inside a continuation, right? So here you can see, so resume, we can uh, throw an error, return a value, but since we also have result in our API, we just resume with the result. Um, what it allows us to do is actually this function uh, actually returns T, uh, so uh, it's generic. So in our case, T is an uh, array of lucky slot items. So basically, uh, inside the closure, we call this API and we pass it uh, in such a way that uh, basically it is getting returned right here. So basically, we convert callback to a return value. That's it. So this is pretty much it. Let's go to the view model. And um, so instead of uh, using using lucky slot live, we want to use it lucky slot async and see how it would change. Uh, this is how it would look like, right? So we would just call slot dot play. Uh, we we try it, we await it. Since we try it, we uh, uh, we also have a do catch block. And if we get an error, we set is displaying an error to true, which will trigger an alert. And uh, for the uh, w then we also display items here. So we basically take an array and compress it into one string. Let's see how it works. Okay, so that's not all we needed to do here. We uh, would also wait it. Uh, task is already here, uh, ready for, for us to use it. And let's see how it works. So this is how we trigger it. So as you can see, we get three random emojis here, right? Th this was the first API uh, which, uh, which used uh, callback. Now let's see how we would deal with delegate APIs, which, uh, which is what we have right here. So um, this is how it looks like. We have um, we just have a function play and the result is returned through the delegate. Here's how the delegate looks like. We just have a function that returns a Boolean value here, right? Very simple, nothing new. Uh, let's see how it works. So we would drive it around the same way. So here we'd create a class um, which would also have a generator. Um, so the old API, we would set the delegate here and also have the de delegate method here. What, what happens here? It's uh, interesting. We use the same with checks continuation. Now it's no longer throwing because if you can see, we don't throw an error anywhere here. So, right, we just, uh, we just return some random value here. This why uh, it is just with checked continuation, not throwing. So we started the continuation here and then fire off the event. Then when we finally get the result in the delegate method, we just resume uh, using the continuation reference we stored before. Very easy. Let's see how it would work in the view model. Okay, before we do that, we have a problem here. We set the UI on non-main threads. How to fix it is very simple. Let's actually start using main actor. We'll talk about it in detail later. But um, all you need to know is that it actually moves uh, everything that happens on a class to the main thread, like uh, access to all members, like functions that we have here or the variables. The other thing is that you can actually mark uh, with main actor, not only classes, but separate function like that. In this case, we don't want to do that because most of the contents should be uh, executed on the main thread. That's why we just mark the whole class with main actor. Okay, so um, let's see if it fixes this error here. 
Okay, so we don't get it anymore. That's awesome. So let's continue with our old API here. So we would change uh, this guy to async. Now what happens is we no longer need to delegate and um, here we, uh, we should make it um, asynchronous, this function, right? That's, um, that's not it. We would need to actually uh, get the result here um, and set it. So here inst instead of uh, setting it inside the delegate method, since we no longer need the delegate, we just remove it. And uh, yeah, we'll just have this need function right here. Uh, we would also have to update this thing inside of view model and let's see how it works. Works pretty good, right? Now, what if you could have an array of events, right? Uh, we actually can do that with async await now. So uh, let's go to the third project that we have here and uh, go to the sticker class. This is basically just wrapper around timer class that we have. And what it does is that if we call start, every second we will get a number here in this closure. So um, what we want to do is actually to convert it to an array of events. And uh, here's how we would do that. So let's go over it. So we create an async stream here, right? Of type integer. And um, here's how we do that. We also get this continuation thing here that we can use. We uh, initialize the ticker and uh, for the closure, each time we get a result, we yield it to our continuation here. Then on termination, if it should be deallocated, we stop the timer. And before leaving the closure, we actually started the ticker to start getting all those events. Now let's see how it works inside the view model. Here's our view model and what I prepared is here we have a task, right? And inside of this task, we want to actually call it. So here's how it would look like. We call this uh, factory and we make this async sequence and then we iterate over it. So basically this sequence will, uh, will give us uh, one number at a time each second, right? And we will get it here. Then we would present it with this neat function here. Let's see how it works. Okay, so you see each second we get a new number showing up here. Okay, this is how you would create your own array of events. Very cool. So you would just use this async stream here. What I also find cool uh, is that we have something like, for example, notifications in the notification center. Let's see how we would deal with them with um, async context. So first uh, to make it happen, let's add a few things here. So I would add a new button here and inside the view model, um, I also have uh, to add some things here. So uh, here's what I added uh, is that now we have a um, notification center, right? And um, what we also need to do is to create, uh, to add some, uh, some extensions here as well. So here we have um, just random um, lucky slot item, which is an enum. And here we just have a notification with a name. Okay, so here's how it works. Uh, we have a button that fires off notification in the notification center, and we also have a for loop that iterates over those notifications. Let's see how it works actually. So we have this play button, let's tap it. Okay, now we actually, uh, we have shown an emoji. Let's tap it again. Okay, cool, isn't it? Um, what we can also do is, you see that we have a task here, we can actually cancel it as well, right, with this function. So let's see how it would work. If I tap unsubscribe and then tap again, I will no longer receive any events. Very simple. What is also great is that you can actually use things like filter, map, um, first um, on those areas of events. Let's see how it works with uh, first. So um, let's say uh, this is an area of events, right? Area of uh, events of those notifications. Let's just get the first one, right? Um, we will use first where. I think maybe we can even use just first. Let's see if it works. Let's, we don't need it actually. So let's, should we try it? I don't remember. Uh, so, and then we would present it just once here. So only first, right? So here in this task, we just get the first event out of the um, array and we present this text, nothing else. Let's see if it works. 
okay? So, um, yeah, so we can, we have to actually use first where, I was right. And um, here we also have to try and wait. So, let's say, uh, let's call play, okay. Only first, you see? Okay, that's it for the array of events or a sync sequence um, as the, it is called in Swift. And let's go to uh, to the next one.